everyone. This time we are going to talk about how do we use graphs to analyze the motion of an object. It is very, very common in physics and engineering, if you're trying to look at the details of how an object moves over time, uh, you take a picture of it. And the mathematical picture of things are graphs. Um, if you look at this graph to the right, this is an automobile as it goes through a variety of different gears and the velocity time graph for this automobile gets complicated because the motion changes depending upon the gear ratio in the engine. We're going to start with something simpler and then we're going to build up to more complicated motions. Now I know you've had graphing somewhere in one of your math classes, so let's just review some of the things you may or may not remember about graphing. When you have a graph, there's always the thing you put on the x-axis is the independent variable. That's the variable that is going to, we the experimenter are going to vary over time, or it's the thing that will vary on its own over time. And when we're talking kinematics, this is often going to be time. Y is our x-axis or our dependent variable, and that changes depending upon whatever happens with x. Now in this upper quadrant, this is where we're going to typically have positive x values and positive y values that we're graphing. And most of the physics graphing that you are going to be doing is going to be in this upper quadrant. But periodically, some of the data will go into other parts of the graph. Slope. Somewhere in your past, I know you've calculated slopes of graphs. I remember from my elementary school days, uh, rise over run, which means the change in the y-axis divided by the change in the x-axis. How much is the change in y for every change in x? And that in the equation for a straight line is often symbolized by the letter m. So slope is rise over 1 or change in y over change in x. It's real common in science to do this. Um, we do an experiment, we gather the data, we plot it, and then sometimes we do some mathematics in between the two, and the goal very often is to graph the data. Now why, one, we're a very visual species, we like pictures of things, but if we can come up with a mathematical relationship between different measured quantities, that is where physics e equations come from, that's where they're born. Uh, these were not just somebody thinking something up, they actually did a lot of experiments, plotted the data, and came up with these wonderful mathematical relationships. Let's talk about displacement versus time graphs. Now that is a graph where we're going to have displacement or x on the y-axis or time on our x-axis. The slope of a displacement versus time graph is the change in x, this is our rise, divided by the change in run, which is time. If you look at your kinematics equations, what is x divided by t? Well, that happens to be velocity. So the slope of a displacement time graph is equal to velocity. If something is going at a constant velocity, it's going to have a constant slope, as in this graph or this graph. Let's, let's do something a little wacky here. Let's say I've got three motions graphed. I'm going to call them a, b, and c. Which object is going at the fastest speed? Which one's going the fastest? Well, if you take a look at it, in a certain amount of time, the object A has gone that far, object B has gone that far, and object C has gone a lot further. So object C obviously has the higher constant velocity, and it also has the steeper or larger slope. So there is a direct visual relationship, there's also a mathematical relationship. If you recall, the slope of a straight line is zero. So let's take a look at these two graphs here. Here is a line with a slope of zero, and here is a line with a slope of zero. What's the difference between, let's call these F and D? What's the difference between these two scenarios? Now remember, we are still doing kinematics. We are still doing straight line motion. So if this is my origin, what's happening is object F 
is stopped really close to my origin, and object D, or person D, is stopped a much further distance from my origin. Both of them have a slope of zero, meaning a velocity of zero, but their positions happen to be different, and we note that by different positions on the displacement part of the graph. What's going on down here in this lower left picture? Well, this is accelerating motion. It's accelerating motion because the slope starts out very, very shallow, very close to zero, and it gets higher and higher. So this curve indicates we do not have a constant velocity in this situation. We actually have a speeding up situation, which we call acceleration. Deceleration, or negative acceleration, is going to look something like this. We start with a steep slope, it gets to be a little less, and it gets to be closer to zero. Now the instantaneous velocity of a displacement versus time graph is going to be at the slope of the tangent to the curve. So if I go like this, and I have a displacement time graph, and I put a curve down indicating accelerated motion, if I want to know the velocity at one moment, because of the fact that this is a curve, I can take the line that is the tangent to that curve, find its slope, and that will give me my instantaneous velocity. Velocity starts out low, gets bigger, and bigger, and bigger as slope increases. Let's try this. I'm going to ask you in a moment to hit pause, and then I want you to take a look at each segment of this graph and see if you can figure out what's going on, and then we're going to talk about it in a moment. All right, are you back? Here goes. This is a displacement versus time graph. In this first segment, a object is moving forward in a positive direction with a constant velocity. They are then stopped with a velocity of zero some distance from the origin. Then they're moving backwards, immediately moving backwards with a negative constant velocity past the point of origin. Then they stop, and then they move forward again with another different constant velocity. So let's put this into a little picture. So in the very first segment, this person is moving forward with a constant velocity, and then they stop, 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 stop for a few moments. Then they move backwards with a constant velocity past the point of origin, stop, 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 stop for a few moments, and then they move forward again back to the point of origin. It's a little wacky because this represents motion just going in one dimension. Let's talk about velocity versus time graphs. Now the slope. slope is, of course, rise over run. So it is going to be the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Change in velocity divided by change in time, well, we know that is acceleration. So, so acceleration is the slope of a velocity versus time graph. Something else that's interesting with velocity versus time graphs is they also have another value, the area under the curve. So if I treat this as a big rectangle, then I have change in velocity times change in time. Well, what the heck is that? Well, velocity is measured in meters per second. Time is measured in seconds. If I multiply those two together, I get meters, which is a measure of displacement. So displacement is the area under the curve. Nifty kind of piece of information that we are able to find out. All right, let's spend a few moments seeing if we can analyze this velocity versus time graph. Again, hit pause and then come back and we'll go through it. All right, here we go. Velocity versus time graph. As time goes on, what's happening with velocity? It's getting faster and faster and faster. It's speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. Then, in an instant, this object is going to change velocities and go backwards. He's got a negative slope, negative velocity that is also accelerating, accelerating in a negative way. And here, it's not stopped, but it's now down to a steady or constant velocity. So this is something that is speeding up a lot, vroom, and then moving, accelerating in the opposite direction, vroom, and then keeps going forward at a nice steady velocity. 
different kind of graphs, a little bit different way we interpret those. Acceleration versus time graph, the slope is going to be the change in acceleration divided by the change in time. And that is the rate of change of acceleration. This is accelerated motion that is actually changing. And that is beyond the scope of our course. We're not going to mathematically deal with that. But that's what that means. This graph here is actually a graph of constant acceleration. What's a classic example of constant acceleration? Well, if you drop an object, you drop an object, the acceleration of gravity on that is going to be steady, and that graph would look like that. If I have an acceleration time graph that looks like this, that's going to mean that each moment the rate of acceleration is increasing. So you have got a massive jet or rocket or something that constantly is not just speeding it up, but increasing how quickly it speeds up. Acceleration of gravity is a, is a classic thing we look at in physics, and we very often do some motion with it and graph it. So what are those graphs going to look like? Well, there's three common graphs for an object that's accelerated by gravity. Displacement time, velocity time, and acceleration time. If we look at displacement over time for the acceleration of gravity, an object that's dropped, the graph is going to look like that. As time goes on, velocity, which is the slope, is going to get steeper and steeper and steeper. If you have something that is an increasing velocity and you are going to graph it, it's going to look like that. As time goes on, velocity gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, if we have accelerated motion, like the acceleration of gravity, the acceleration of gravity is steady as time goes on, and that graph is going to look like this. All three of these describe the same motion, but we're looking at three different sets of data or pieces of information. Before we go, try this. Just hit pause, take a moment, see if you can figure out what's going on here, and if you can answer these questions. Because if you can, your brain is doing a nice job of analyzing graphical motion. OK, let's go through these. In which gear does the car achieve its highest velocity? Well, highest velocity is on this side. So where is it going the fastest? Well, that's going to be in fifth gear. Within which gear does the car have the greatest rate of acceleration? That's going to be the biggest slope. That's going to be first gear. Which gear is the car in for the longest amount of time? Time is down here on this axis. That's going to be fifth gear. Biggest amount of time is going to be in the fifth. And within which gear is the rate of acceleration the least? That's fifth gear. There's that the slope is straightened out. There's not as much acceleration in the fifth gear as there was in the others. All right. Have fun messing around with this in lab, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>